Hello, it's David Dillard from Sleep and Sinus Centers, and uh, I'm talking today a little bit about pecan allergies. And um, hickory uh, and pecan are both uh, closely related compounds. And um, the uh, the walnut, hickory, pecan um, families of trees are all related. Um, they have uh, a sort of what was called a pinnate looking um, structure, pinnate compound um, structure to their leaves. Kind of looks like this, apologies to Wikipedia. The um, uh, pollens of these particular plants are highly um, uh, sensitizing to allergies for those people who are prone to allergies and asthma. And so consequently, um, it's a very common allergy. Um, now, pecan pollen allergies and pecan nut allergies, as well as hickory and uh, all of those related con uh, uh, tree nuts are um, not necessarily synonymous with the nut uh, fruit allergy. So, uh, people who are allergic to pecans and people who are allergic to walnuts may not necessarily be allergic to the pollen and vice versa. Um, certainly it's something that can be tested um, with uh, either your laryngologist or your allergist or your primary care doctor uh, or your pulmonologist uh, at times. The, um, the allergens um, that are released from these um, these plants, which are pretty much all over naturally the south, uh, sort of tropical and subtropical climates, um, but can be planted pretty much all across the nation, um, tend to bloom somewhere about May. And in certain climates, they can represent up to 70% of the pollen uh, the, when they are um, blooming. Um, Certainly in some areas they're planted for their nuts. Um, it's a very common uh, commercial crop, especially in Georgia and in Texas. Um, and um, the, uh, there's a lot of cross-reactivity uh, with people who are allergic to both um, hickory and walnut or um, the uh, uh, um, pollens from uh, the pecan family. Uh, they come out of basically two families of trees um, that are grouped into this, this area that have similar appearance to them. Uh, obviously, we most of us have seen pecans. Uh, I am a uh, uh, Georgia native, and so we grew up eating uh, a lot of pecan, everything from pecan pie to, uh, to just shelled pecans and uh, I remember having the uh, nut crackers, which my, uh, my mom would let me uh, do and then make me do as I got older uh, to get the, the nuts from those. But at any rate, um, the, uh, they're a very common crop in, in the southeast. Uh, so consequently, they're very um, prominent uh, in the pollen counts in the spring and May. Um, the um, the gist of this is, is that um, it's easy to test for uh, if you tend to be sensitive to it. Uh, early spring, May-ish is, um, is a um, time when we um, see a lot of the, the pollen counts. So you know that you're allergic to it. You want to try and stay indoors during those time periods. Keep the car windows up. Wash your clothes at night. Uh, and those are some simple things that you can do. Uh, you can be desensitized to it using either sublingual drops or immunotherapy injections. And basically you're just teaching the body with little bits at a time to ignore that allergen by uh, telling the body that it's okay, see it's not dangerous, um, by either putting it under your tongue, which is convenient, or injecting it under the, uh, the skin. Um, the uh, to sum up, you need to test independently to see if you're actually allergic to the meat 
of the nut. Um, if you tend to have allergies um, in one area, you may very well have allergies in another area. Um, so the, the proteins and the things which are um, likely to cause the allergens are not exactly the same. Um, and um, hopefully this is helpful. Um, we'll talk to you soon.